Those who God predestinated, he also called. This is the third link in the golden chain that we will explore today. The third step in the salvation of a person is God's effectual call, his divine summons of that person. Paul says, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Those whom God foreknew in respect of salvation and who were predestinated to be conformed to the image of his Son were also called by him. Brothers and sisters, when we understand that salvation is the work of God alone, we will appreciate that there can be no breakdown in the process. The Greek word translated as called is kaleo, according to Vine's expository dictionary of biblical words. The word is used particularly of the divine call to partake of the blessings of redemption. The word kaleo was used in the first century as a technical word in legal practice and meant an official summons, as in the case of the summoning of a witness to court. The word here means more than a mere invitation. It is a divine summons. The ones summoned are made willing to obey the summons, not against their will, but with their free will and consent. It is an effectual call. The one called always responds. In Ephesians 2 verse 8 we read, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Paul is informing us here that we are saved by grace. Salvation is all of grace. The faith we exercise in order to be saved is given to us by God when he calls us and is included in the salvation provided. The call of God, therefore, is a divine summons which is always answered by the one summoned. When we speak of the call of God, we are referring to the process by which the soul, which was dead in trespasses and sins, hears the voice of God and is translated out of death into life. In other words, when God effectually brings to pass in the life of any person that which he has purposed in himself according to his decrees and purposes, that person is called. Brothers and sisters, it is very important for us to recognize that there are two calls spoken of in the Bible which must be carefully differentiated from each other. There is an outward call that is universal and there is an inward call that is specific to the elect and which produces life in them. The Outward call comes to all human beings. It comes to them in the proclamation of the gospel. It is of this outward call that our Lord refers in Matthew twenty-two fourteen: For many are called, but few are chosen. The Greek word translated called here is not kaleo which is translated as called in Romans 8.30. The word used in Matthew 22.14 is kletos, according to Vine's expository dictionary of biblical words. The word kletos is used to speak of an invitation. It is used of the call of the gospel, as in Matthew 20.16 and the scripture that we just read, Matthew 22.14. It is not used in these verses to refer to an effectual call. The inward call of God 
is the effect of his eternal foreknowledge and predestination to conform those whom he has chosen to the image of his son Jesus Christ. But this inward call of God is also the actual cause, the actual means, the actual implementation of the eternal purpose whereby we are conformed to the image of God's Son. Those who have been inwardly called, kaleo, go about proclaiming the outward call, kletos, to all men. The Lord Jesus ordained that we should do this in Matthew 28, 19 to 20. We are used of God to give the outward call, but only God can give the inward call. The outward call can and is often rejected, but the inward call is always obeyed. The inward call is the operation of the Holy Spirit within the heart of those whom God has chosen unto himself before the foundation of the world. It is an operation that exerts a life-giving power that effectually makes alive those who were dead in trespasses and sins and raises them up to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The mark of the individuals who have been foreknown and predestined is that they have been effectively quickened so that the life of God has become their life. This call does not merely tell the blind that they should open their eyes and see. This call gives sight to the blind. This call does not merely tell the deaf that they should use the powers which they have in order to hear. This call unstops the ears of the deaf and brings such life to the ear that the softest whisper of God can be heard by the soul evermore. It is possible for a person to hear the outward call and respond to that call only. They may make a profession of faith and even submit to water baptism and speak in tongues at an altar. They may become members of the visible church, but all of this does not guarantee that a genuine work of conversion has occurred in their hearts. Those who hear the inward call and are genuinely converted become members of the invisible church, hearing and responding to the outward call only may have the effect of uniting us to a group of professing members, but the inward call unites us to Jesus Christ himself and to all those who have been genuinely born again. The outward call may bring with it a certain intellectual knowledge of the truth and produce external changes and conformity to creeds and standards. The inward call does much more the inward call brings with it a radical heart change. It brings with it a love which always draws us back to him who first loved us. The inward call will gradually conform us to the image of Jesus Christ and will one day cause us to be perfectly whole. The third link in the golden chain of salvation is God's effectual call of the believer to salvation. Because of God's effectual call in respect of believers, all things work together for their good. Because all things work together for their good, they may be referred to as finished works in progress. 
The inward call of God is irresistible. Have you had this experience? Until next time, think on these things.